Hello and welcome to another Fratello Watches video. Today we're talking about the Rado 1957 Golden Horse Limited Edition watch. So this is a pretty special model for the brand. It's just about as faithful as a modern recreation can be. This watch is listed at 37mm in diameter, but it actually comes in a little smaller at 36.5 across. In my opinion, retaining a smaller diameter was a great decision. And although this watch head does look great on a variety of leather straps, the Beads of Rice bracelet we've got it on here is, for me, the best choice. You might notice that this model is normally modelled on a leather strap. That's how it comes as standard. However, we preferred it on the slim Beads of Rice bracelet, and if you buy the watch directly from Fratello, you'll get both the bracelet and the leather strap included in the package. With a subtle taper, the bracelet balances the petite watch head very well and gives the ensemble more presence on the wrist. A 44mm lug to lug length won't cause too many people problems and this means that the watch can appeal to a wide range of customers. The most striking element of this particular model is the red dial. It's worth noting that the sunburst graining is not as obvious on the images as it is in real life. This added texture is to the watch's credit and has me thinking that this is not a watch that would get boring to wear. A lot of images, and especially the renders, present the dial as a brighter shade of red. In fact, in real life and natural light, the watch appears to have a more burgundy hue. While this may not be quite as exciting as a bright scarlet dial, it is certainly more versatile. The use of colour in this and all the modern golden horses is clever. The blackened edges of the dial work very nicely against a polished stainless case, and by the time we get to the applied golden seahorses just above the 6 o'clock marker, the black has fully given way to red, which makes for a warmer background for the gold to stand out against. At 3 o'clock, there's a date window with a polished applied frame that matches the hour indices very nicely. Probably the slickest design touch of the whole package is the red font on the date wheel. This kind of thing is incredibly uncommon even though it makes all the difference. As such, the date becomes softer and feels more integrated, rather than sticking out like a sore thumb on the edge of the dial. Faceted polished dauphine hands connect the case colour to the centre of the dial. They fit the classic style and, for once, I don't mind that they're not luminous. The brand logo rounds out the display. As with many Rado logos, it moves, with the well-known anchor rocking around a central pivot. It's an interesting animated touch in an area you might not be expecting it. It's kind of hard to believe that this watch is powered by an automatic movement when you see it from the side. It measures around a centimetre thick and that includes a pretty steeply double domed sapphire which recalls the Hesselite lenses of old. And this isn't just any old automatic movement, this is an ETA C07. That's basically an upgraded version of the 2824 with both movements showing the same architecture but little else. The C07 has a remarkable 80 hour power reserve which is exactly the kind of update you want to see in a modern reissue. So how has Rado done this? We see this movement cropping up in a lot of the Swatch Group's entry level luxury brands and I think that the specs, or at least the headline specs, make it incredibly good value for money. You see, in order to increase the runtime of this watch, the operating frequency has been reduced from 28,800 vibrations per hour to 21,600 vibrations per hour. That means the watch is literally ticking less often. Instead of the escapement unlocking 8 times per second, it is only advancing 6 times per second. As such, the power reserve can be significantly extended. This is a smart trade-off. Customers recognise and understand power reserve, while it is fair to say that fewer customers have a working knowledge of, or even interest in, operating frequencies. The movement sits behind a closed case back with a really nice case back design. It's a nice touch that hammers home the vintage vibes of this model. By making such an informed trade-off, the ETA C07 becomes a far more attractive option than the ETA 2824 upon which its architecture is based. When combined with a striking yet surprisingly balanced aesthetic of this piece, the Rado 1957 Golden Horse Limit Edition becomes a really tempting buy at €1,740, including the leather strap. This model is one of the latest additions to the Fratello shop. You can check it out in detail by following the link at the top of the homepage. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check fratellowatches.com for all your latest watch news and reviews.